Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. Today we're going to do a quick guide about file transfers between retro handheld devices. There are several different ways you can transfer files between your computer and your device, so we're going to cover all of those and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each. And this guide applies to any device that runs off of Emulation Station. Primarily we're looking at the RK3326 devices. So things like the Odrego Advanced clones, the RG351 devices, RGB10, RGB20, as well as the Odrego Super and the RGB10 Max. The bottom line is if you have a device that runs Emulation Station as its front end, all this is going to apply. So by far, the easiest way to transfer files is going to be by transferring it directly on the SD card. Now not every firmware has the ability to show a partition that'll work on a Windows PC or a Mac computer, but a lot of them do, so we're going to use ArcOS as our example here. When you stick in an SD card for ArcOS, it'll come up with two different partitions. And one of those partitions is labeled Easy ROMs, and that's going to have all your game folders. So it's as easy as opening up one of these game folders, then going onto your computer and finding wherever your ROMs are, and then you just drag the files over. We're going to do two different types of transfers for every method. We're going to do a small file transfer and a large file transfer. So here's the small file transfer. You can see it's averaging about, I'd say, 40 megabytes per second. Let's do the same with a large file transfer. Let's transfer over some Dreamcast games. Now in general, you probably aren't going to see a huge amount of difference between transferring over 2 gigabytes of large files versus 2 gigabytes of small files, but I wanted to be thorough, so that's what we're doing here. You can see here it's significantly slower when you do a large file size for this transfer in particular. We're getting on average about 20 megabytes per second, so about half the speed. So that's transferring on an SD card. Let's try the other methods. Next is going to be Wi-Fi FTP. First thing you need to do is make sure that you're connected to your home Wi-Fi network. In ArcOS, you're going to do that in the Options setting, and you'll go into Wi-Fi and make sure your connection's all set up. I'm already set up and good to go, so we can just skip this part. Now, ArcOS is unique in that you have to enable remote services in order to do Wi-Fi FTP. It's as simple as going into the Options and then enabling it there. Now, when you enable it, it'll show you for a split second what your IP address is, but if you don't catch it there, you can go into Network Info and find your IP address there. You're going to need that here in a second. Now back on our computer, you're going to go into an FTP client. I like to use one called WinSCP. Now all you have to do is just set up a new session. Now your host name is going to be that IP address that we just saw, so make sure that you got that down. Now when it comes to FTP login credentials, it's actually going to be unique depending on what firmware you're using. Here are a list of all the most popular firmwares for these devices. And I'll have a written guide in my video description, so just click on that link if you want to get a picture of this so you can use it for later reference. But as you can see for ArcOS, the username is Arc and the password is also Arc. So back on our computer, we're gonna type in Arc for our username and then Arc for the password. And that's it, we can go ahead and log in. Now because I switch between so many different devices and different IP addresses, I often get this potential security breach warning. It doesn't really matter for this. You can just go ahead and hit update. And just like that, we're wirelessly inside our device. So typically what you wanna do in order to find your ROMs folder is you wanna to go to the root folder of your SD card and right there, you'll probably find one that's called ROMs. Sometimes it's called storage, but it's going to be the same thing. So now we can navigate over to our Dreamcast folder and do a large file transfer this way. So as you see here, even though wireless FTP is very convenient, you know, you don't have to pull your SD card out of your device. You don't have to use any wires or anything else like that. You also pay for it in speed. These large file transfers for Dreamcast are running at about three and a half to four megabytes per second. So you're definitely paying for that convenience with about 10% of the transfer speed that you would get from directly doing it with an SD card. And that'll be fine if you're moving over small files, but when it comes to big files, that might be a pain. Now say we want to move over a bunch of small files, say a gigabyte of small arcade files. You can see here it's also transferring at a slower speed. This is also averaging about 3.5 to 4 megabytes per second. But there's also a way to speed up the FTP process, and that's by doing a wired connection. As you can see here, I have a USB to Ethernet adapter from Anchor plugged directly into my router. The nice thing about this is I don't have to use any credentials when connecting to the network. There's no Wi-Fi password I need to add in. It's just going to have instant internet. Of course, you'll also have to have the ability to have an Ethernet cable handy. But it's going to be the same process here. You need to enable remote services and then also make note of that IP address you've been given. Same thing here. Type in that IP address. Same username and password here because we're on Arc OS, Arc and Arc. Okay, we can go back into the root folder, then the ROMs folder, and then let's jump into our arcade folder and move over these small files and we'll see how fast they are this way. So obviously it's significantly faster here. We're seeing an average speed of about 15 to 20 megabytes per second. 
so a good five times faster than using wireless FTP. So same thing here, let's try a large file transfer using the wired Ethernet cable. And just like before, we're getting an average of 15 to 20 megabytes per second. So this is definitely handy if you want to transfer things over without having to take out your SD card. And finally, there's one other way you can transfer things, and this is a special one only for ArcOS. So here I am on my RG351V, I'm going to enable remote services again. And back on my computer, you go into an internet browser and you type in HTTP and then the name of your device for this in RG351V. And it's going to pull up an ArcOS browser. And here you type in that same ARC and ARC password. And just like that, you're using a browser-based FTP. So the advantage here is you don't have to install WinSCP or any other FTP client, you can just do it through your internet browser. So to transfer over files, we'll pick a folder here, and then you can select the upload button, and then you can actually either select files or folders altogether. And say we select all these files, you can just hit open, and it'll start the transfer. Or to make it even easier, you can actually just drag and drop into your internet browser. And if you look at the very top of my internet browser, there's a little blue line that's going across. Now this footage is running at 20 times the normal speed, so it might look like it's fast, but it's actually pretty slow. This is about as slow as the wireless FTP method. All right, so in summary here, here are the different file transfer speeds for the various options you have available on these devices. Obviously the SD card is much faster. You can move smaller files over at about 40 megabytes per second, and even large files over at 20 megabytes per second. Wi-Fi FTP is definitely the slowest here. You can see it gets about three and a half to four megabytes per second. Same thing with the ArcOS web browser. I couldn't actually see the transfer speeds, but it just felt like it was about that same speed as well. And then obviously Ethernet FTP is much faster than wireless FTP. And one quick note here, the Odrego Super actually has the ability to run a five gigahertz Wi-Fi adapter. So you're probably gonna get much faster Wi-Fi transfer speeds for that device alone. Okay, so wrapping it up here with a pros and cons list. Obviously the SD card is the fastest, but it has the most risk. Because you end up putting a lot of wear and tear on your device by taking that SD card in and out. At some point, the little pin connectors and the SD card slot or the SD card itself are gonna wear out. And so this is one of those things to just kind of think about if you plan on using this device for a long time in the future. Now Wi-Fi FTP is definitely convenient, but of course it's slow. Now Ethernet FTP is much faster than Wi-Fi, but then you have to deal with a bunch of dongles and you have to have an ethernet cable handy. Now, when it comes to Wi-Fi FTP, if you're running ArcOS, then the web browser might be something to think about because not only is it wireless, but you don't have to worry about having an FTP client either. And of course, the only downside of that is you need to be running ArcOS on your device, which is a lovely operating system. So it's not really a loss there. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I'm trying to keep it a little bit short here, but I wanted to show you all the options that are available to you when it comes to transferring files to and from your device. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you primarily use an SD card? You have a Wi-Fi FTP? Are you one of those weird people that just have ethernet cables lying around? I'd love to hear what you think. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.